Well, it's that time of year again. I wanted to take you guys real quick through the process, show you how easy it is to do your own oil, and I wanted to have a discussion. If you're not doing your own oil, why not? Some of the reasons I would encourage you to do your own oil is it's a great time to give your engine a once over, look at the undercarriage, just kind of check things out. And honestly, I think you'll do a much better job than taking it down to the quick lube place because honestly, nobody cares about your vehicle more than you do. And it, like I said, it's a good chance to give your engine that once over, look for any loose belts, things that are cracked or broken or hey this doesn't look right the battery terminal is corroded whatever underneath looking at your suspension stuff just a good time to get yourself familiar with all that and most importantly you can save yourself a ton of money so i've got all my supplies here a couple five quart jugs of oil this is more than enough it'll last me oh, an oil change and a half i got my new filter here i generally like uh, the wix filter that's what i usually get this is all they had on hand right now so i'm going to go with that that'll be fine but i will include a link in the description for the Wix filters, order that ahead of time, have a few of them on hand. So all of those supplies for this oil change is gonna cost me about 30 bucks, where a good uh, full synthetic oil change, having it done at a quick lube shop, it's gonna cost around $90 in my area. So I'm saving 60 bucks by doing this myself right there. So that's definitely worth my time. So obviously the first step, I just uh, pulled the drain plug on the oil pan there. I've got my uh, catch pan down here and the oil is, it is hot right now. I just drove the Jeep recently. You can change it when it's hot. Uh, just be careful you don't burn yourself on anything. And when you're done, don't over tighten that oil plug. Now this cover just pops right off. The next reason I hear that most people don't do their own oil change is just because of the time, the time it takes to do this. But you know what? Uh, I think I can do this quicker than you can run your Jeep down to the quick lube place, wait in line. From the time you leave your house, run down there, wait in line, get the oil change done, drive back home. I'll be sitting on my couch with my feet up on the ottoman watching a baseball game. So after that big cover came off, our oil filter cap is right here. This is a uh, 24 millimeter socket. We're just unthreading this, unscrewing this, and our filter will be right there. So as far as saving time, yeah, I don't really think it saves you a lot of time unless you're already downtown, the quick lube place is right there. Yeah, you might be able to do it a little bit faster, but uh, you know, I, I kind of enjoy working on it myself as well. So here's our old filter. We're gonna take that guy off real quick. This O-ring, we're gonna pull off as well. And we'll get our new filter set up. New filter, new O-ring, and we're gonna get a little bit of new oil. Just gonna dip my finger in that oil there. A little bit of new oil on this O-ring. You don't wanna install this O-ring dry. Just smear a little, little bit of oil on it. Doesn't take much. Slide it on back on the cap here. Come on. And our new filter just snaps right in place. Boom, easy. So we can take our new filter, I'm just cleaning off the cap here a little bit and spill any oil here. So I think we're good. We're just gonna thread this back in place. And the next reason that I hear that a lot of people don't, don't do their own oil, don't like doing their own oil, it's just the hassle. And yeah, it does take a little bit of work, but uh, you know, I'm willing to spend half hour, 45 minutes of my time to do a better job, save some money doing this job myself today. I'm saving $60. I'll take that $60, put it in my pocket, go out to eat at a nice restaurant. There is a torque specification on this. Um, it's not very much. I do it just, just snug right there, perfect. That looks good, all cleaned up. We're ready to put the cap on or the plug back on. Let's see, torque specifications, that uh, filter housing cap, 103 inch pounds and on our oil oil drain plug 3.6 liter 20 foot pounds but uh, honestly on this on that uh, oil filter cap and this drain pan i don't torque them i've done enough of them that i know 
kind of right about where to do it. As I said earlier, you definitely don't want to over tighten them, especially your drain plug here. You can run into some problems. I'm just wiping off my drain plug and we'll thread this back in. Don't drop it in your oil pan, your catch pan. I've done that before. It's a mess. You gotta fish it out. And we're gonna get this guy just snug. And another complaint I hear is now you've got all this old oil, like what do you do with it? Well, you keep a couple of those uh, five quart jugs around, pour this back in it, and then uh, some of the garbage services, like mine here, my, our sanitation service, they have a free pickup. So I just have to put one of those jugs out with my garbage and a certain day of the month, they allow you to do that and they'll pick it up and take it for free. So disposing of the oil is really not that bad. Now on the driver's side, take our oil cap, fill cap off here. We're gonna fill it up with our 530 full synthetic. And yeah, full synthetic oil change, it's expensive if you have a shop do it. This is gonna take about five quarts, a little over five quarts. We're gonna fill it up uh, with five quarts and then we're gonna start the engine for a few minutes, or not a few minutes, for a few seconds. Oh, about 15, 20 seconds. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pump oil through the new filter, because we got that filter in there, right? But it's dry. We wanna get uh, oil on that, because otherwise what you'll do is you'll fill it up here, you'll check your oil level and it'll look good. Then you'll go to start your car later on and that oil level will drop as some of that oil gets uh, onto the new filter. So start it, uh, we're gonna fill it up, start it, and then uh, shut it off and check the level. That was about two and a half quarts. This was a leftover one. And if you're new to car maintenance, automotive repair, doing your own job, this is a great place to start doing oil changes because it's fairly easy. Uh, it's a good, good first job to do. Gets you familiar with some of the parts of your engine. And it's kind of fun to do it and you feel like you accomplished something. Okay, I've got five quarts in there. I'm gonna start it up real quick, run it just for 15 seconds or so. Alrighty, now that we got uh, oil circulated through everything, let's check the level real quick. See how much we need to add. So on your dipstick, if you've never used, uh, check your own oil. On this one at the bottom here, there's a little little safe zone, we just need to make sure we get the oil up into that safe zone where these uh, little hash marks are. Some of them will say uh, like full or low, safe, different uh, dipsticks are different. And this one is, yeah, not even on the dipstick yet, so we're probably about a quart low. So let's add some more. And after adding extra, I just kind of wait a little bit so that oil like all gets down into the pan for when we check our dipstick here. I don't pour it and then check it immediately. I probably don't need to wait very long, but that's my habit. Pull it out, wipe it off. So we get a nice fresh reading here. And we're about halfway up on our hash marks there. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. You don't want to overfill it because you can run into issues there as well if you overfill your oil. You want it just in that safe zone. All right, that's perfect. Got our oil filled up. Let's uh, clean this up and I'll show you how to reset the oil light. That'll be the last thing we do. And I'm always double checking before you start filling the oil. I've heard many stories from people uh, forgetting to put their, their drain plug back in. They start filling their oil up and checking the level and gosh, it's just not filling up. And they look underneath their Jeep and a big puddle. Ugh. Now that's a mess. So double check everything, kind of like they do at the quick lube place, right? Plug check, cap check, fill check, dipstick check. Like they go through all that. Good time to check your engine coolant, washer fluid, all that, just peek in those. Uh, I keep a little bit of those on hand as well. But anyways, uh, cap is tight. Oil cap is tight, plug is on, peak underneath. I'm not dripping oil all over, that's a good sign. Let me throw this cover back on. And we will reset the oil light. So this guy just slides back.
Now to reset the oil light, we're gonna put the key in the ignition, turn it on two clicks, one, two, without starting the engine. And then we're gonna push the gas pedal down three times, one, two, three. The gas pedal down all the way to the floor three times within 10 seconds. And we'll turn it back off. I'm gonna open the door just to reset everything, make it think I got out or whatever. Now we'll start it up, make sure that oil light is off. 118,000 miles. Probably need to do a transmission fluid change here soon. That'll be a good upcoming video. But there you go, oil light is off. And there we go, job well done. And yeah, don't get me wrong, if uh, doing your own oil change just isn't your thing, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are just the reasons why I do my own oil, save myself some money, I just put 60 bucks in my pocket. Put my hat on here for my little hat toss at the end. Let me know in the uh, comments below, do you guys do your own oil? Yes, no, why, why not? It's a great first place to start if you're new at working on vehicles. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out my next video right up here. Have a good day. Let me try a hat toss here, one shot. And I totally missed that.